Mikey Dunn here for 3CTV Live's Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Tonight we got the Avangrove Red Devils versus the Octorera Braves. The Braves are tonight's home team. So we get ready to see Octorera take the, receive the opening kickoff. Avangrove comes into this game at 2-3. and three. They're 0-2 in conference play. Both teams are part of the Chessmont American Division. Octorera sits at one and four. And uh, again, I'm Mikey Dunn joined by Mike Dunn. Mike, tell us a little bit about Octorera. Actually, tell us after this kickoff. There's a lot of running room for Octorera, and it looks like he's going to go running up the sideline. Will they catch him? The kicker's trying to. Still going inside the 20. Finally, drug down at the 10 yard line. That's Cy Hall, the junior wide receiver. What an opening play, opening kickoff, great return. So great start to the game for Octorera. Flip back set. And it's gonna be second down for the Braves. Gain a two on first down. Octorera is led by their junior quarterback, Trent Pauling and their senior running back, Scott Burridge. That handoff goes to Burridge. Expect to hear his name a lot tonight. Gonna bring up a third and goal for the Braves. Another pick up a two. Third and six for Octorera. They had that great kickoff return. They'd love to put up a touchdown on this opening drive. Toss play, it's a reverse. Oh, what a trick play. That's gonna go for a touchdown. Calling out all the stops on the first drive of the game. That's Nick Robb catching the reverse pass. And that's how the Braves want to start every game. You can't script it any better than that. As Alex DeMars misses the extra point, they just brought him in this week. He's actually a soccer player. So six to nothing, Octorero takes the lead. So Avangrove, they started the season off in an unfamiliar place. They started off 2-0. and They won against Kennett 35-7. They scored three TDs in the first 7.59. Nate Jones, their stellar senior running back, had 15 carries for 141 yards and two touchdowns. Week two, they won against Oxford 14-13, but then things started to go downhill for the Red Devils. Avangrove, Lost at Unionville 20 to nothing, where head coach Harry O'Neill was a longtime assistant. Then they lost week four at home to downtown East 35 to 7. They had just 27 yards in the first half. And on their first 28 plays, only 11 went for positive yards. So really hard to win football games if you can't even go forward. And then last week they lost against Westchester East, 21 to three. See if they can answer with their own scoring drive 
as they get a decent return. That return by Tyler Boyd. So the Red Devils look to tie it up. This is an Octorera team that gives up 33 points a game. I formation, the backfield is the best part of the Avon Grove offense. Man in motion. The handoff goes to Jones. He busts it to the outside. He's got a first down for the Red Devils. And Nate Jones, you'll see him number five, the five foot eight, 180 pound senior running back. And also number 24, the junior fullback, Kevin Francis, are the two best players, frankly, on the entire team. They lead this offense. Joey Borkey is the quarterback this evening for Avangrove, although they've seen a couple quarter, quarterback see time this season. I formation. This will be a big win for either program tonight. Jones again. Fights his way to actually gain positive yardage. So he takes that up to the 49, second and eight for the Red Devils. A lot of pre-snap movement for the Red Devils. Handoff goes to Jones as he is met right away at the line of scrimmage. Third and six for Avangrove. Pre-snap movement again. As the handoff goes to Jones, showing you what their offense consists of. Jones, 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 and Jones. But Octavera keeping up with the Joneses. As the Octavera defense gets to stop. Avon Grove did get it on the Octavera side of the field. Chris Haynes with the punt. Well covered by Avon Grove. We'll be right back after this word from the D'Ambrosio Auto Group. Hey. Number one, Jeff D'Ambrosio, Destination Downingtown during the Jeep Celebration event and Ram Power Days. Get new Jeeps for as low as $99 a month. New Rams as low as $139 per month. Over 2,500 vehicles in stock. Our goal is 100% credit approval. Jeff makes it easy to make the right deal. If you want more for less, you got to see Jeff. Click GoJeffAuto.com for more savings, more selection, more for your trade. It's so easy at Jeff's. You'll love our deals, I guarantee. Number one, Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group, Destination Downingtown. Now, kill Monday. Number one, Jeff D'Ambrosio.
Chester County's most trusted insurance agency. Whether it's for your automobile or your home, a life insurance policy or coverage for your business. Since 1975, Miller's Insurance Agency has been protecting homes, property, people, and businesses throughout Chester County. Miller's guides you every step of the way, providing the best options, getting you the right policy that works best for you. Contact us today for a no-cost consultation. Miller's Insurance Agency. We're here today for your tomorrows. Visit online at miainc.com. Chester County's most trusted. As we're back at Octorera High School, as the Braves lead 12 to nothing, the only thing that's really not gone their way is the point after touchdowns. And as you always say, you've got to be sound in the kicking game. It's one of your favorite expressions when it comes to football. There's two main sayings for football that could be, you know, said for every game. You got to be sound in the kicking game, and a win is a win. So if Octorera happens to win tonight's ball game and they look at the film and go, oh man, we struggled on those first two extra points. They're gonna say, oh yeah, but we won. Well, I'm gonna go back to the stat that I said earlier about the number eight defense versus the number nine offense. This is gonna be a battle. There's a flag on the play. I wanna say one of the Braves ran uh, off sides there before the kick. They usually don't blow the ball dead there. If we wait the official signal. It is offsides on Octorera, so back them up five yards. And they've not been doing the longest of kicks, so Avagrove stands to get good field position, but if they can't find another source of yards, it's gonna a, be a bit of an issue. I'm a little concerned that Octorera doesn't appear to have a kicker that they can put their trust in because they've gone for the, the PATs have both been missed. Well, they went for the fake on the second one. Right. So they had to put uh, three tenths of a second back on the clock as that last kickoff did not count. It's a squib kick, but I don't believe it was an intentional squib kick. Jones with the return. Going to be pushed just out short of the 40 yard line. Actually thought he should have been out about the 38, but they're putting him down at the 40. That's going to do it for the first quarter as it's Octorera 12, Avangrove nothing. Chester County Transmissions is Chester County's auto repair pros for all your auto needs. They're family owned and Chester County Transmission pledges to all their customers that we were repairing our transmission using the most cost-effective repair methods available. It's not hard to see why they've been trusted since 1980. They are located at 2343 East Lincoln Highway in Coatesville and can be reached at 610-384-2879. Or you can go to ChesterCountyTransmissions.com and get a repair quote 24-7. That's Chester County Transmission for all your auto repair needs. Thus far, this game is all Octorera, obviously, and I think Octorera is going to pull this one out at this point because they're playing such inspired football. There's a bit of a mist of a rain on the field. Well, try to show what they've struggled with though this year. They go off sides. So, giving Avergrove a first and five. I mean, part of the reason why they have struggled, though, is things like turnovers and penalties. And when you see a team that's struggling, they don't play a full game. So they do have the 12-0 lead right now, but Avangrove gets, you know, two touchdowns. They now have a two-point lead. So stick with this. This one's not over yet. Jones with the first down carry. That's right, who? Nate Jones. First down run, that's what he did on the last drive. He got a first down run on his first carry. This time, he only needed to go five yards. Interesting observation here on both of the touch. I'll come back to that in a moment. Will somebody not named Nate Jones get the ball? And he will, because dropping back to pass and almost intercepted. Dropping back to 
for that pass was Joey Borky. It was almost intercepted by Brandon Watterson. He's a senior. Yeah, now you're saying it's a little bit of a miss, but I mean, it's actually coming down kind of heavy. It's almost like a sheet of mist. It's kind of weird. Wind driven. Evan Grove doing their pre-snap motion. So the handoff goes up the middle. Well, they, they did what we've asked. They've not given it to Nate Jones the last two plays, but it's not been overly successful as that carry went to Wyatt Kirby, the freshman running back. Like it's third and nine. They tried to pass it once tonight. It was almost intercepted. Do they just keep giving it to Jones or do they try for the pass here? I think they go back to Jones. It's been successful for them so far. Let's see. And it does go to Jones up the middle. Did the ball come out? I think the ball came out and it looks like Acarrera has the football. And they do. It's all Octorera and the home crowd loves it. It's Nate Jones, the best player on Avangrove, loses the football. I started to make a comment about the weather before. In the first quarter, Octorera went into the rain and it was flawless for them. Avangrove going into the rain, no good. As Octorera already with a two score lead, Gets the ball, a great field position on their own, 45. Pauling rolls out. That pass is complete. No, he drops it. High uh, Hall had it in his hand. Cy Hall couldn't take the hit and hold on to the ball. It's a well-thrown ball. It was looking like Pauling was just gonna take it himself, but he kept his head up. Avangrove needs a stop. I think Avangrove is in a little shock right now. They don't expect a one and four team to hold them to no score so far. Well, I want to get to a quote from Coach Harry O'Neill after this play. As the Avangrove defense swarms Pauling. It was after last week's loss to Westchester East, Coach Harry O'Neill said of Avangrove, we moved the ball well today, but we need to finish drives. We haven't scored a touchdown in three weeks. I mean, you can't win football games if you aren't scoring touchdowns. And they're down by 12 points right now, so the defense needs to stop. It's third and 10. And there's that reverse again, reverse pass. And it's wide open again. Pass is complete to Nicholas Robb again. Exact same play as the touchdown pass on the opening drive, but. Big Ab first down play. Avangrove again cannot stop it. That was well thrown by Caden Dalton. So Nicholas Robb catches a touchdown pass off the reverse throw. And then he gets a big first down on a third and 10. Option, Pauling takes it himself. Only once tonight has he actually done the pitch on the option. It's surprising me that Pauling is keeping it as much as he's keeping it, but it's working and Evan Grove just can't stop it. Inspired football by the Braves tonight. Remember there's different levels of Pennsylvania football this year. It goes all the way up to 6A. Which is Evan Grove. And 4A is after era. So it is kind of weird having the teams with the uh, same divisions but different rankings. So they play in different playoffs. Pauling drops back the pass. His man had a step just too far. Pass was intended for John Easterday. He didn't look like it was open at first, but then he found a little bit of distance. But the throw was just too far. Tell you what. Pauling's just a junior. If he can get some of these throws a little bit more under control. You know, Octavera has something to look forward to. 
And the way they're playing tonight, offensively and defensively, is something they can build on throughout the rest of the season. Again, they got eight minutes and 50 seconds to go in the second quarter, an entire second half to play after that. But the Braves looking very strong. Pauling takes it himself. Nice tackle on the play. Avangrove's made some nice tackles. They've had good pursuit, but then they just are allowing the Braves to get the big play when they need. It's fourth and three. They're going to go for it. Dylan Estes with a nice tackle on that last play. Yeah, we've seen their issues in extra points, so not surprised they're going for it here. Abengrove has to make sure they stay on sides. As Atterrera calls the timeout, I like what they did there. They tried to draw them off sides. Abengrove didn't bite, so that's well done by them. The Chessmont Game of the Week is brought to you by Barnabas of Westchester. That's right, Barnabas Westchester is a group that exists to help people that are involved in some sort of career transition. Whether you're unemployed, underemployed, returning to the workplace after a long absence, or maybe just thinking about switching careers, they are here to help you. Barnabas Westchester meets in the community room of Providence Church, located at 430 Hannam Avenue in Westchester, meeting every Monday from 6.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. All are welcome to attend. For more information, go to BarnabasWC.org or email info at Barnabas.org. And the Chessmont Game of the Week is also brought to you by Beaver Creek Tavern. That's right, you've heard us talking about them the last couple years. they got the best burgers in Chester County, including that delicious bison burger. You, you know love your bison burger. It's a nice lean beef. Put some American cheese on it. It's the best way to eat it. They're working at 1350 Bondsville Road in Downingtown. They got live bands Saturday nights. They got a full menu available. It's classic American fare. They got gluten and vegetarian options available. It's right, Beaver Creek Tavern. Go see Still take great care of you. Fourth and three. They are still going for it. Pauling takes it himself. Will he get the blocking? He takes it to the outside. It's going to depend on the spot, I think. There's only one, only one set of uh, yard mark, uh, you know, chains here. They are going to roll it a first down. The Braves' drive continues. Mike, one thing that strikes me, if we, as we look out over the field, we see a small cluster of players on the Otterrera sideline and a large number on the Ivan Grove sideline. Yeah, Otterrera has, we'll get to that in a minute. Is it? Hall is tackled by several Ivan Grove players. Uh, Octorera, oh, we, we said this before the game, we have the Octorera roster. It's one page with two names on the second page of the roster. Avagrove has three full pages of players. They have probably the biggest team in Chessmont. I mean, I thought Downingtown had a big team. Downingtown West, Downingtown East, but Avangrove has a ton of players. Avangrove is a very quickly developing area, as is Kennett. Second and... 10 for the Braves. As that goes to Zach Hagee. No room to run, but they've been able to pick up a big third down already on this drive. If nothing else, Otter is taking more time off the clock. You're watching the 3C TV live Chessmont Game of the Week on chessmontfootball.com. Folks, don't forget, you can like us on Facebook under 3C TV Live, follow us on Instagram on 3C TV Live, and follow us on Twitter at Chessmont FB. Pauling drops back the pass. He's got plenty of time, but nobody's open. He takes it himself. He's not going to have enough for the first down, but he gets decent yardage. And I believe they're going to go for the field goal as Alex DeMars runs out on the field. They're going to give him a chance. It's fourth and five. Fourth and five from roughly the 20 yard line. Yeah, for those who have not been to uh, the field here, their, uh, their scoreboard actually does not have the uh, yardage on there. And the uh, because of how the wind has been tonight, the yard markers on the sideline, several of them have fallen down. 
The kick is up, almost blocked. And it's gonna come up just short. Okay, it's wet out. There's some wind going. As far as I'm aware, this is his first game kicking. And I think it was a good call to go for with the wind at their back. Uh, it was a 35-yard attempt, and I think you're right about the idea of it being his first game. The accuracy was there. It was just the distance. So the only thing not going Octavia's way has been when they've had to kick the ball. They've uh, you know missed an extra point, missed a field goal. They went for two. Uh, instead of kicking an extra point and their kickoffs have gone short, but defensively, they've played a great game. Offensively, they've played a great game. 6-17 to go in the first half. Octorera leads 12 to nothing. Nate Jones with the carry. And folks, you can go to 3ctvlive.com can click on donate now help us keep putting on these great broadcasts for you and businesses interested in advertising you can go to 3ctvlive.com or you can call 610-306-9492 of course 3ctv live is the producer of chessmanfootball.com second and five for avon grove we're going to score their first touchdown in three weeks. Jones is thrown back, but he breaks the tackle. He's finally drugged down for a big loss, but what is he supposed to do? They know the pass isn't coming. He made four guys miss, but then he still lost yards. It looks like, looked like you know, what Barry Sanders used to look like, where he would take a loss of five or ten yards, but then he'd also get a gain of 20 on a play like that. But they lost six there. Yeah, we talked about it earlier. Against Downingtown East, which was two weeks ago when they lost 35-7, to in their first 28 plays, only 11 went for positive yardage. Dropping back to pass. And completing the pass was Borky. It's a nice catch. It's Gonna be short of the first down. They're calling for a measurement. As they're gonna rule that he is short. It's fourth and one for Avangrove. I know they're in their own territory, but. Oh, they're still doing the measurement. They uh, they kept the clock running there. Maybe feel like they had already rolled them short. And he is short. It is gonna be fourth and one. Yeah, that, that reception was by Dylan Lapham. Lapham did what he could to get that first down, but it just wasn't enough. Yeah, the throw was there, but it was thrown short of the first down marker. And how rare is it to see a team go for it on fourth down in their own territory in the first half? But Avon Groves knows. They're down 12 nothing. They have struggled offensively. I'd be shocked if Nate Jones doesn't get the carry. They only need one yard here. Offsides. Uh, Saw about four Braves jump, but was the first movement by an Avangrove player. The refs are going to talk about that because an Avangrove player did move, but I, th I thought it was after the Braves. They're going to talk this one over. He may have been caused, moved for causation, not it's against Avangrove. And Octorari takes over on downs. Now, my confusion there is if that was a false start, should the play have even happened? Yeah, because the false start is a dead ball foul. Maybe they ruled it was a legal procedure and they let the play happen. Either way, it's Octorari football. That pass is thrown in the dirt. Pass was intended for John Easterday. If they can put up a touchdown here, I mean, 
they got to be going into the locker room just thinking we can do no wrong right now. If they fail to get points here, they'd have to be, definitely be disappointed after getting another stop. You know, I want to say that the, the quarterback, Borky, thought he had a free play because of the offsides and just tried running it up the middle. I don't think that was the actual design play. Two flags on the play. It looks like it was offensive holding. Jackson with the carry, but I think this one's coming back as the two refs that threw the flags were looking right at where the offensive linemen were. So that's going to hurt their cause a little bit, but just talk about Octorera tonight. Well, Octorera's doing very well, obviously, with the ball tonight. They're, they're leading over Avon Grove, and it's not indicative of their season on a the whole. They've been blown out most of their games. They won one game this season, and they lost four, and I'm amazed at the play I'm watching. But more specifically, what have they done to be successful tonight? They've passed. The option play has been phenomenal with... Um, Pauling. Pauling. Pauling pitches out on that one to Burge. I haven't even had to say Burge's name too, too much tonight because everything else has been successful. as it brings up a second and long, third and long, excuse me. They've just changed it. They're a little delayed on the, on the scoreboard here. As they still have it as second down. They've just changed it. Screen pass to Burridge. He's fighting for every yard he can get. That's Burridge in a nutshell. I watched him at practice on Tuesday, and it was an exciting set of downs to watch him in practice. He was doing phenomenally well. Yeah, granted, it's against his own team, but he, he has a high football IQ. Well, they partially did what they needed to do there. Wouldn't you? We've talked about this week after week. For the perfect screen pass, you want to let the pressure come and then you're going to lob it over their head right to the running back. The problem there was there was a linebacker spying who was right there to make the tackle. And it's a pooch putt. But it's going to bounce into the end zone. So the net yardage there is not going to be very much. Avagrove gets the stop after the turnover on downs. Minute 56 to go. They have plenty of time to put up a touchdown before the half. If they can, because the defense of Octorera has held them each and every time. They made them turn it over on downs at least once. Folks, college101.us, another fine sponsor of the Chessmont Game of the Week. You know, college can open doors to a life that you've been dreaming about, but how do you get there? Well, college101.us has the tools to help you out. We'll tell you more about them after this play. And off goes to Jones. It's like college101.us. They can help you find the school that's right for you, to help you apply, and also give you some assistance with finding financial aid. They also have stories from current and former students on how to maximize your college experience. Go to college101.us. Second and nine for the Red Devils. No urgency by Avangrove. I don't know if they're just trying to run some clock down, get in a halftime only down two scores and talk about what they want to do. Flag on the play. That was the White Hat who threw that one. It's usually, I think it's to delay a game. And that's not a kind of legal procedure. They're just not helping themselves tonight. Avangrove has everything going. I mean, actually, you know what? I will say their defense has not played poorly, save for two trick plays. The special teams has you know, let them down on the opening kickoff. The offense has let them down. Nate Jones has to be frustrated. He's got no blocking. High formation. Dropping back the passes, Borky. 
Intercepted, what a play. We have a player down. And that was intercepted by Pauling, the quarterback does it all. The ball was just lobbed up there into double coverage. They tried to let that one fly. They were unsuccessful with, hey, coming up on October 8th, it's Cheshire County Airport Pilots and Tenants Organization is uh, pleased to announce this year's Fall Flying Festival. It's a community outreach event that occurs at the Chester County Geo Carlson Airport each fall. It's originally scheduled for tomorrow. It's been rained out, but we'll tell you more about it after this play. Pauling dropped at the pass. There is a flag on the play. He goes down inbounds very smartly, trying to allow the clock to keep running, although there is a penalty. So as they discuss what the penalty was, the Chester County Fall Flying Festival, they have static aircraft displays, aircraft flybys, airplane rides, helicopter rides, monster truck rides. They had a car show, a motorcycle show, and live bands, and so much more. Lots of fun for the whole family. This year's Fall Flying Festival, the Chester County Airport, again, it's going to be held on October 8th from 10 to 4. Admission is free, so come join us. Well, what was the call there, Mike? It was a chop block against Octorera, and it's going to cost them 15 yards. And they had great field position after the interception, but, you know, they probably wouldn't be too... Uh, too disappointed really just to let this to run the clock out here. Uh, go into halftime, up by 12. The clock is running under 35 seconds now. Does, does Avigrove call a timeout, just try and get the ball back? Doesn't look like it. Damian Fahey with the carry. As we're under 20 seconds to go here at Octavera High School. Westchester East and Coastal tied at 7-7 right now. And right now we're gonna go to halftime as the Octavera Braves showing some love to their student section as they are up 12 to nothing, surprising Avangrove, the two touchdown favorite. We'll be right back with uh, second half action, about 15 minutes or so, on 3C TV Live's Chessmont Game of the Week on chessmontfootball.com. <laughs> Now till Monday, number one Jeff D'Ambrosio destination Downingtown during the Jeep Celebration event and Ram Power Days. Get new Jeeps for as low as $99 a month. New Rams as low as $139 per month. Over 2,500 vehicles in stock. Our goal is 100% credit approval. Jeff makes it easy to make the right deal. If you want more for less, you gotta see Jeff. Click GoJeffAuto.com for more savings, more selection, more for your trade. It's so easy at Jeff's. You'll love our deals, I guarantee. Number one Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group destination Downingtown. Chester County's most trusted insurance agency. Whether it's for your automobile or your home, a life insurance policy or coverage for your business. Since 1975, Miller's Insurance Agency has been protecting homes, property, people, and businesses throughout Chester County. Miller's guides you every step of the way, providing the best options, getting you the right policy that works best for you. Contact us today for a no-cost consultation. Miller's Insurance Agency. We're here today for your tomorrows. Visit online at miainc.com. Looking to advertise your business? Well, 3CTVLive.com would like to welcome you, the business community, to advertise on our Game of the Week Chessmont League for 3CTVLive.com. Please contact Al Ray Johnson of 3CTVLive at 610 
306-9492. Again, 3ctvlive.com welcomes the business community to advertise live on Game of the Week Chessmont League. She's the most important thing in our lives. Are we doing enough to provide for her? Protect your family for today and a lifetime of tomorrows. Life insurance from Miller's Insurance Agency. Serving our Chester County community since 1975 and a partner with Erie Insurance. Above all in service. Contact us today for a no-cost consultation. Miller's Life Insurance. We are here today for your tomorrows. Visit online at miainc.com. Hi, I'm Alan Foster, and this is Amber Little, and we are 3ctvlive.com. Listen, we're coming to you today asking for your help. In order to produce the programs that we're looking to do, we're going to need your help. We're going to do this through donations and through sponsorship. Absolutely, Alan. And you can actually go right to our website, 3ctvlive.com and click on the Donate Now button at the top right-hand corner. You hit Donate Now, it's going to come up with a window. You're going to fill out that information and send in your donations. Listen, Amber and I will come out and do a live commercial for you. We will, Alan. And actually, I know there's a lot of businesses, small businesses in the Chester County community here that need the marketing and advertisement right on social media and 3ctvlive.com can do that just for you. But in order to keep this program alive, to bring you the school board meetings, to bring you the sports, this is how we're gonna fund this operation. So Amber and I are here asking for your help. That's right, Alan. And in fact, again, going to 3ctvlive.com and clicking on the right hand button, the donate now button, will allow you to donate today. All right, let me explain to you how to donate. It's a very simple process. You go to our website, 3ctvlive.com. On the right-hand side, you'll see a button. It will say, Donate Now. You hit that button. What happens is it comes up, fill out the information, send it off to us. We want to appreciate everyone who has donated in the past, and we look forward to your donations in the future. From all of us at 3ctvlive.com, would like to thank everyone that has donated to this cause to allow us to continue to stream to you the different community events that happen here in Chester County. The next time you would like to sponsor an event with 3ctvlive.com, please email us alray at 3ctvlive.com and let us know what you would like to do for your next sponsorship. Hoping to see you soon out there in the world, Chester County. We're coming. 3ctvlive.com. Please enjoy the next program.
chessmontfootball.com. As you can see, the band is behind me and they're doing great. Right now we're at Octorera High School as the Braves take on the Red Devils, the Avon Grove Red Devils. It's a pretty exciting game right now. The score is 12 to zero with the home team winning. Unfortunately, both teams aren't doing the, too well this season as Avon Grove is two and three and Octorera is one and four. We'll see how the rest of the game goes. We still have an entire half left.
are back live at Octorera High School as the Octorera Braves lead the Avon Grove Red Devils by a score of 12 to nothing. It's been all Octorera. I mean, the Avon Grove defense has had some stops, but offensively, Octorera has come up with the big plays. Avon Grove has not been able to come up with anything. Just two first down runs, really, by Jones. And it's, you can't win football games if you're not getting first downs. We've said they've not scored a touchdown now. Going back to the first half of this game and the last three games, 14 quarters without a touchdown. The ball goes between the legs of the return man. As there's going to be a block in the back, so it goes between the legs of the return man. That was Tyler Boyd. But then, it's a block in the back. Not the way you want to start off the second half. You're only down by 12 points. You get the ball. If you can go out there, maybe get a touchdown, make it just a five-point game if you get the extra point. You don't want to start off almost losing the ball and then getting a penalty. Mike, your thoughts on what Avangrove needs to do in the second half to get back in this game? They have to play sound football. They've got to get back to the basics of the game. They're getting away from the basics. They're trying some fancy things, and it's not working. So first and 10 for the Red Devils. It's a jet sweep to the outside. Carry by Tyler Boyd. Burge with the tackle. It's one of the things I love about high school football is just seeing players play, you know, Ironman football. Those, if you saw the interview on uh, Facebook that we did, on, again, you can like us on Facebook, 3C TV Live. We had an interview with the captains from Octorera. They were saying, Avergrove has such a big roster that they don't have to have as many guys play uh, both sides. Low snap. Borky just takes it himself. Borky did what he could. It was we have a man down. He's a little slow to get up. That injured player is Dylan Curtis. But he's staying in the game. Mike, it's third and six. We've seen what happened when they've tried to, to throw it tonight. They had one play where uh, it was almost intercepted. But then they had, sorry, it's third and one. They have now updated that. They uh, had another play, though, where they picked up. Decent pass yards. I want to say they gained 10 on a play where they needed 11. And it is an option. Borky's got the first down. He's still going. And that's the best play for the Red Devils all night. Showing some speed there was the junior quarterback. Yes, and I was saying they have to get back to basics. That's an example of it. They've got to play the sound football game that Avon Grove has shown in the past. And... I mean, no touchdowns. They can't do this. They've got to score. Yeah, but the, the pass were meeting the first two weeks of the season when they started off 2-0. and They beat Kennett 35-7. to That's a Kennett team that destroyed Octorera. And then they beat Oxford 14-13 to in week two. But since then, no touchdowns. Handoff goes to Jones. This is more likely. You're talking about the basics. The basics are... Your offensive line goes out there, they block. Your big men against their big men. Who's going to win that battle at the point of attack? And if you get four, we always say, if you gain at least four yards of carry, you're going to be successful. They just picked up four and a half, almost five. The ball is right in front of us at the 44-yard line. Opening drive of the second half. After our leads, 12 to nothing. It's the 3C TV Live Chess Monkey of the Week. Go on chessmonfootball.com as Borky takes it himself. He takes the quarterback draw. I don't know if it was a zone reach. I don't know if there was ever any chance of it going to Jones or if he decided to take it himself, but it's going to be third down. Third and two. Man in motion, low snap. The handoff goes for no gain as 
Nico Arhantakis. I'm going to let you say that one. That sure is his name. As we had uh, some of the coordinators uh, a little frustrated as we uh, see Avagrove going for it on fourth down again. Fourth and three for the Red Devils. Going for it on fourth down on the opening drive of the half. And Borky takes it himself on the draw. He lowers his head. I definitely say he's got it up for the first down. We're waiting for the ball to be spotted. It's going to be a Red Devil first down as we have a injured player for the Braves. We're going to be right back after this word from the D'Ambrosio Auto Group. Day. Number one, Jeff D'Ambrosio Destination Downingtown during the Jeep Celebration Event and Ram Power Days. Get new Jeeps for as low as $99 a month. New Rams as low as $139 per month. Over 2,500 vehicles in stock. Our goal is 100% credit approval. Jeff makes it easy to make the right deal. If you want more for less, you gotta see Jeff. Click GoJeffAuto.com for more savings, more selection, more for your trade. It's so easy at Jeff's. You'll love our deals, I guarantee. Number one, Jeff D'Ambrosio Auto Group Destination Downingtown. The injured player there was Joe Lean, number 77, the junior lineman, five foot eight, 205 pounds. Well, the Red Devils did what they needed to do. They picked up the first down. They're getting back to basics. First and 10. Carry goes to Jones. He takes it to the outside. Hurdles a man. Gain of eight on that play. This is just what, after they started off the drive poorly with the penalty on the kickoff, this is the most successful drive they've had all night. And we said for the previous couple weeks they've been able to move the ball between the 20s. They just haven't been able to get the touchdown tonight. They weren't moving the ball at all. It's like a new football team out there, Mike. Second down, Avon Grove. They are in brave territory. Borky's running with it. Still going. Wow, when he sees contact's about to come, he just lowers his head and lunges forward. Usually you want your quarterback to slide, but he wants every yard he can get. I think that was supposed to be a pass play, but he saw right away, you know what, nobody's open. I'm going to take this myself. This has been the Joey Borky show on this drive. And it was good for the first down, so he's doing what he needs to do. The O-line is playing better than they did in the first half. And glad to see Joe Lean on the sideline. He's already got his helmet back on. He's ready to go. 6.45 to go in the third quarter. 12-0 Octorero, the home team with the lead. Handoff goes to Jones. He busted to the outside. He's still going. They still can't tackle him. There is a flag on the play right in the area of offensive holding. I thought I saw that flag get thrown out earlier. Seems like every play Jones is having to run up the middle. There's already defense right there. And it so is offensive holding. It's going to come back. What we're going to say is every time he gets the handoff, there's already a brave player right there. So he has to cut it to the outside every time. And I think what allowed him to cut it outside there was the hold. That would have been their best play of the night thus far. It was a great effort by Jones, the offensive line not helping him out. First and long is another snap issue. Pass is complete to Jones, but that's going to go for a loss. Brings up second down and 11. I'm sorry, second down and 21. Jude Unitas, the sophomore, nice tackle there, but it's still, it looks like the rain has uh, subsided, but the ball's still wet because the field is still wet. A couple of low snaps on this drive. You mentioned the field. At either end of the field are huge lake-like puddles behind the end zones. It's going to be a timeout. Avangrove, we're going to take this timeout to hear from our friends at Miller's Insurance. 
She's the most important thing in our lives. Are we doing enough to provide for her? Protect your family for today and a lifetime of tomorrows. Life insurance from Miller's Insurance Agency. Serving our Chester County community since 1975 and a partner with Erie Insurance. Above all in service. Contact us today for a no-cost consultation. Miller's Life Insurance. We are here today for your tomorrows. Visit online at miainc.com. Folks, just a reminder, you can follow us on Twitter at ChessmontFB. Also, like us on Facebook as 3C TV Live and follow us on Instagram at 3C TV Live. Coatesville and the Westchester East Vikings still tie. It's a surprising score. Especially the way Coatesville's been scoring this year, they've been running up the scores. Borky takes it himself, takes a big hit. What you got to worry about when your quarterback keeps lowering his head is he's going to take a big hit. Third down and long for the Red Devils. One observation I'll make here is Borky goes over to the sideline after every play to get the next play from the coach. There's apparently no signals in play here. Guess they just wanted to make sure they get the exact right play call, but. Five minutes to go in the third quarter. Avangrove trying to get their first touchdown in three weeks. Oh, but what a pass rush. Fumble, ball comes out, Octorera football. He avoided the pressure, but then when he went to throw it, nice job. Just stripping the ball. Damian Fahey gets the recovery. Joe Wayne coming back from his injury, forcing the fumble. Evan Grove doesn't know what hits him. They were driving down the field, and after that holding call, that was it. Now the defense for Evan Grove has been able to uh, to hold Ottawa's offense, which really safe for two trick plays. And those two trick plays led to scores. Four forty-three to go in the third quarter. As right after the timeout, Octorera has to. I mean, right after the turnaround, Octorera has to call a timeout. Surprising to see, but hey, gives us an opportunity to talk about our friends at Chester County Transmission. That's right, Chester County Transmission is Chester County's auto repair pros for all your auto needs. They are family-owned, and Chester County Transmission pledges to all of their customers that we will repair your transmission using the most cost-effective repair methods available. It's not hard to see why they've been trusted since 1980. They're located at 2343 East Lincoln Highway in Coatesville and can be reached at 610-384-2879 or you can go to ChesterCountyTransmissions.com and get a repair quote 24-7. Chester County Transmissions for all your auto repair needs. First and 10 for the Braves. Another trick play, wide open receiver. Going for the big gain, it's the halfback pass. Jed King is pulling all the stops tonight. Brandon Garber with the reception. The most successful passes tonight haven't been by the quarterback. What a pass by the Braves. Jet sweep. Hall takes it down to the six. Octorera is feeling it right now. And Avon Grove is just befuddled by what they're seeing. They're in shock. And something uh, unique for this stadium is there's uh, the, uh, the one set of uh, bleachers. So both teams fans are in the same set of bleachers. Well, 
Shotgun formation. Hall in motion, high snap. What a job by Pauly just to hold on to that snap. He's one-handed grab. Now this is where they've gotten themselves in, in trouble a little bit tonight where they have a couple of nice plays, but then they're, they're gonna be a turnover or a snap issue. But what a job by Pauling to catch that. Phenomenal job by Pauling. And he reeled it in, took it up the field, got stopped for a loss, about a yard, maybe two. But and that could have been a lot worse if that snap went over his head. Absolutely. An important thing for Octorera, clock keeps on ticking. We're at 3.18 to go in the third quarter. The Braves still with a 12 to nothing lead. If they get a touchdown here, dare I say, that would be insurmountable. Pauling takes it himself. Cuts it back. Still not down. A lot of running just for a gain of two, but Third down for the Braves. We've seen the issues they've had in the kicking game. Well, for the last three drives, they haven't gotten down inside the 20. I think that based on their field location, they will succeed this time. I feel like they might just go for it on fourth down, depending on the yardage gained here. I'd like to see a play action pass. Instead, they just fake the handoff. Pauling takes it himself. But at this point, the Red Devils are really just expecting you know, whatever is coming in the running game. It's been the trick plays passing that have worked for Octorera. As Pauling wanted a late hit there, he was kind of pushed a little late, but uh, I, I can see them not throwing the flag there. And the coaches up here were upset that they didn't get that call either. And Alex DeMars in to attempt the kick again. <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of interesting just seeing him kind of line up, get ready to take this kick. It looked like he was trying to figure out where he wanted to be standing at. It'll be a 21 yard attempt. Will he get his first field goal? Flag on the play. And a legal procedure on Octorera. They're making it now a 26-yard field goal attempt. And maybe it'll help him because of the where the ball is placed with the hash marks. I don't know. Just for confidence-wise for the for the team, uh, they'd like to see themselves get some points after that big play. Kick is blocked. And running it back is Avangrove because you can run back kicks in high school and college. And you know what? Avon Grove is going to score. But DeMars has me thinking, wait, what just happened? Uh, I'm, I'm, used, I'm used to soccer. What just occurred here? He's, he's looking at the coaches. It's going to be an Avon Grove touchdown, their first touchdown in three weeks, and it comes on a blocked field goal. Wow. I'm in shock. I'm in awe. Uh, the reaction of the press box was unbelievable. Because this is just a six point game now. I, I it, Wow is uh, really the response you gotta have there. They decide to go for the field goal even though they had kicking struggles. They get the false start of the illegal procedure. Back it up five yards, great pressure uh, by the, uh, the line as, hey, we have our first main kick of the night. It's an extra point goes through for Avangrove. It's a 10, 12 to seven ball game. Octorera still with the lead, but they have to be thinking, my God, what, do we, what, what just happened here? We'll be right back after this word from 3CTVLive.com. Looking to advertise your business? Well, 3CTVLive.com would like to welcome you, the business community, to advertise on our Game of the Week Chessmont League for 3CTVLive.com. Please contact Al Ray Johnson of 3CTV Live at 610-306-9492. Again, 3CTVLive.com welcomes the business community to advertise live on Game of the Week Chessmont League. 
for your 3C TV Live Chessmont Game of the Week on uh, ChessmontFootball.com. Viewers that are thinking, why does Mikey always say you got to be signing the kicking game? You just saw it right there. You have Octorera missing extra points, missing field goals. They decide to go for the field goal there. They get the penalty, backs them up five yards. It's a new kicker. It's a little bit of a low kick. And then it gets returned for Abigail's first touchdown. Oh, it's an onside kick attempt. Recovered by Otterrero, so Otterrero is going to get great field position, but there's a minute six to go in the third quarter. It's a five-point game now, Mike. I mean, as you said, wow. <laughs> Momentum is uh, shifting. Uh, got the Avigro fans fired up. Otterrero is thinking, all right, can we please just march down the field and get a touchdown? We'll go for two if we have to. Falling in the shotgun. It's the option. This time he does toss it to Fahey. And now we're going to have a word for Barnabas of Westchester. Barnabas Westchester is a group that exists to help people that are involved in some sort of career transition. Whether you're unemployed, underemployed, returning to the workplace after a long absence, or maybe thinking about switching careers, they're there to help you. We'll get back to that after this play. Second and seven for the Braves. Man in motion. The snap is fumbled. Barnabas Westchester meets in the community room of Providence Church located at 430 Hannam Avenue, Westchester every Monday morning from 630 to 730. All are welcome. For more information, go to BarnabasWC.org or email info at Barnabas.org. You know, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, just a nice simple run play here maybe just to kind of calm things down. Uh, just let it get to the end of the quarter. Let head coach Jed King talk to his boys. Now they're actually throwing. There is a flag on the play. Two flags on the play. I can't believe Paul didn't go down sooner. But as I'm saying, as we're waiting for the penalty, is just let the quarter end and calm your team down because they're a little shocked after what happened with the blocked field goal. They fumble a snap. And on that, you saw what happened on that passing play. It was a broken play there, too. It looks like the wheels may be falling off for Octorara. On the positive side, though, they still got that five-point lead, and their defense has been strong. Their defense hasn't given up a point on it. That was holding for the defense, holding against Davin Grove on one of them. Again, there was two flags thrown, one by ref on the far sideline, another one by the back judge. As the refs try to figure this one out, I want to talk to you about our friends. From Beaver Creek Tavern, that's right, Beaver Creek Tavern, the best burgers in Chester County. You got a full menu of classic American fare. They got that delicious bison burger. They got vegetarian options, gluten-free options available as well. We're located at 1350 Bondsville Road in Downingtown. Again, live bands on Saturday. You can book your own private event. You know I love it. I don't just eat the bison burger, but you can't go wrong with that one. So go check out our friends at Beaver Creek Tavern. And live bands on Saturday. Get to watch great football tonight on Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Go see live bands at Beaver Creek Tavern. It's, it is going to be third down. There's 14 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Third and two for the Braves. This could be the last play of the quarter. My As bet is Pauling is going to carry it. You can actually see the coaches on the sideline saying, do not run a play, don't run a play, let it go to the end of the quarter. That's going to do it here for the third quarter at Octavera High School as the Braves lead 12-7. to Interesting quarter we had there. We'll discuss it after this word from college101.us. You know, Mike, college could open doors to the life that you've been dreaming about, but how do you get there? Well, college101.us has the tools to help you out, whether it's finding the school that's right for you, finding out how to apply, or getting some assistance with financial aid. They can help. They have stories from current and former students on how to maximize your college experience. Go to college101.us. How to go and what to know, well, they'll let you know.
Now, uh, Mike, it's we, we were thinking going into this game, we were saying, hey, uh, both these teams have struggled this year, but uh, they're, they're fairly evenly matched. You were talking about their, their offensive and defensive ranks. Uh, these are... These are two teams that, uh, you know, know each other well. They're in the same division. But they have shown some of why they've struggled. They've shown some of why they have some hope going forward. You saw Avangrove on the opening drive kind of march down the field, but then they hurt themselves with penalties. Octorera had another big pass play on a trick play. They hurt themselves with the penalty, and then they give up the, you know, the the blocked field goal for a touchdown. So that's where we stand. It's 12-7. Octorero with the lead. They have a third and two. As the ball comes out again, another fumble. Avangrove has the football. And I believe you said it best, Mike. The wheels are starting to come off. I believe that wagon might be uh, down to one wheel. Avon Grove definitely has the momentum in their favor. They're in the middle of the field, and what's going to stop them? As there's some Avon Grove students here, and they were fired up after that. They're thinking, hey, we're still in this. Now, the offense is yet to, to score a touchdown tonight, but it's a five-point game. The Octorera defense, if they can force another turnover, that would be huge. Surprising turning of, uh, turn of events. Jones with the carry. He's got room to run. He's past the 50 inside the 40. He's going up the sideline. And he's going to go for the touchdown. What a run by Jones. Busting into the outside. And just like that, Avangrove has the lead. 61-yard touchdown run. What a run by Jones. We were waiting for that all night as the Octorera players and fans don't know what hit them. And just to add to the interestingness on special teams tonight, they call a timeout before the extra point. I think it's because they're going to go for, discuss going for two to make this a three-point game because they've seen the struggles that uh, Octorera has had kicking. Wow. Sometimes there really aren't, aren't words to describe what you're seeing, but I, if you're, if you're a coach, Jed King, what are you telling your players right now? Calm down. You're still in the game. Calm down. It's not over. We've got a full quarter left to play. Yeah, I mean, offensively, they've been able to pick up some, some good yardage. They've just struggled when they've gotten in the red zone. Uh, defensively, that was the only big play they'd given up all night. I'd be curious to see what happens when they come out the first play of the next drive. Do they do a trick play? <laughs> and for you Red Devils fans, congratulations. That's your first offensive touchdown. In three weeks. Yeah. 15 quarters without an offensive touchdown. They are going for two, and Jones is wide open. The two-point conversion is good, 15 to 12. Avangrove with the lead, 11.38 to go here in the fourth quarter. Folks, coming up on October 8th, originally scheduled for the first, the Chester County Airport Pilots and Tenants Organization is pleased to announce this year's Fall Flying Festival. It's a community outreach event that occurs at Chester County's Geo Carlson Airport each fall. It's now in its fifth year, and this festival features free admission, has static aircraft displays, aircraft flybys, airplane rides, helicopter rides, monster truck rides. They also have car show, motorcycle show, live music by local bands, and other activities for the whole family. The food vendors will also be on site. This year's Fall Flying Festival will be at the Chester County Airport October 8th from 10 to 4. Again, Admission is free. For more information, go to fallflyingfestival.com or call 610-384-9000. 
And it's a squib kick. Not a bad return on that. It's it took us to the 35. TC Davis with the return. So there's an injured player on the field. Brandon Watterson's down. He's back up. And folks, watching the 3C TV Live Chessmont Game of the Week on chessmontfootball.com. You can like us on Facebook as 3C TV Live. Follow us on Instagram on 3C TV Live. Or follow us on Twitter at ChessmontFB. And I'd like to add that after the weekend, this game will be archived and available for you to watch again if you're so interested. If you're, we uh, were, had some technical difficulties during that opening scoring drive by Otterera. That pass is incomplete, but we were recording that, so you can go on and see that opening touchdown drive that you missed from the Braves. But that won't be till at least tomorrow night, if not longer. And you're going to want to go back and you're going to want to watch and see what happened with that blocked field goal return with the big run by Jones. Octorera down by three, looking to get their second win of the year. Option play. As it goes to Fahey, you know, there wasn't much room to run, but I think Paul and waited a little too long to do the toss because by that point, Ran out of real estate. Third and eight for the Braves. Shotgun formation. Pauling, looking for someone to throw it to. There's nobody there. He takes it himself. He's going to run for the first down. The run by the with a 7 nothing lead on Oxford. There's no doubt in the fourth quarter as well. You know, we saw the Indians. They were struggling for a couple weeks, and they were just able to put together a couple of wins. And that's what we're talking about for the, both of these teams in this game. If you can get... You know, one win that can really propel you to a lot of good things. If, if Avangrove, you know, ends up winning this game, pulling off the comeback, they have a lot to build on going forward. You learn a lot about your team when they're trailing. Pass is complete for a first down. Rob, with one touchdown tonight. The recipient of two trick plays, the same trick play, both times. And they're calling for a measurement again. The update on the Coatesville game for you. They're up 20 to 7 on Westchester East. At halftime. I have to think that it's that's just a delayed score because we're, we're in the fourth quarter here. It's yeah, but you never know. There could have been an injury. We await the measurement. It's actually going to be just short. Originally thought he had it, but they gave it a little bit of a different spot. Yeah, that usually happens between the near man and the far man and the referees. I mean, we saw on the second touchdown for Otterera, the guy closest to the play said he was short. The ref on the far side of the field ruled touchdown, and then they ended up ruling touchdown. Second and one. This is the, I mean, we have 10 minutes and eight seconds to go in the fourth quarter, but this is a big drive for Dr. Rare just to get the momentum back in their favor. And now it goes to Fahey. He's got the first down. Well, he needed a couple inches. But this is where Dr. Rare has uh, struggled really since that second touchdown is they get in Red Devil territory, but then when they start getting near the red zone, penalties, uh, negative yardage plays. I don't know if it's the, you know, the play calls aren't working out right or the players are getting nervous or or what, but they, they need to get a touchdown because they're down by three, but the field goal is looking very questionable. 
Great pass rush. Ball is lobbed up and dropped. Almost intercepted and almost caught by uh, Garver. Not the best of throws. Well, one thing that definitely is playing here is the idea that Octa River is a much smaller team. They have fewer guys. The guys that are playing are going to get tired quicker. Second and ten for the Braves. And we always talk about a player of the game. I honestly don't know who I would call player of the game right now just because there's still so much time left and we've seen so many crazy plays. This game has turned out to be something I, w I never expected. And up, up the middle. Burge has nowhere to run. As you can see, you know, some of the Abigail players on the sideline are getting fired up. They, in the first half, I wouldn't say they, they felt like they were out of it, but they were just kind of what's going on right now. But I can see multiple players applauding, kind of jumping up and down after that tackle. Some people say they don't believe in momentum, but it's, it's definitely a real thing. Well, that's like saying soccer isn't a contact sport. Yeah, momentum exists. And you can tell in a game like this, after the first touchdown by Avon Grove, Octorero really started struggling, but they have a third and nine. If they complete that screen patch to Burridge, he tries to fall forward for a couple of extra yards. He's going to be short of the first down, but it makes it a fourth and manageable. They're definitely going to go for it here. It's too far for a field goal. They picked up six on that screen pass. He fell forward for about three of those yards. Fourth and three for the Braves. They take Burridge out on this play. 8.25 to go in the fourth quarter. The Avangro fans making some noise. As that pass is complete for a first down to Nicholas Robb. They knew exactly what they wanted to do. And did it. Took the snap drop right back, threw it to his big target. Rob is six foot four, 215 pound senior. You know, sometimes you can tell who the seniors are because they step up in games like this. It's a senior year, his team has one win. He's definitely gonna Give his all tonight. Pauling takes it himself. Cuts it back. What a juke move. He just needs to be careful. He's holding on to that ball with two arms because after that first juke move, he held that ball out. He's lucky he didn't fumble. He almost got the first down. He was a little shy, but he almost got it. A pickup of nine and a half. So at this point in the game, there's 7.15 to go. We can see a couple more scores, but like we said, just to get the momentum back on their side. As it's a jet sweep. Hall fighting to try and get to the end zone. It's gonna be a first down. What a run by Hall. We saw Hall take the opening kickoff back uh, all the way down to the 10 yard line. Sun Valley leading uh, Kennett right now. Not a team we talk about very much, but Sun Valley looking to get the W this evening. First and goal, ball on the one yard line. They do the quarterback sneak. They haven't ruled yet. Again, I always say I don't like it when they wait to make a ruling because the players can move around so much. And there it is, what a delayed ruling, but it's gonna be a touchdown. Pauling with the quarterback sneak. You always hear me talk about when you get that close or if it's a third or fourth and short, I always like the quarterback sneak. And it's going to be an Octorera touchdown. They take the lead back. As they're setting off sirens and uh, flashing the lights and everything, celebrating that score. The 
The kick is up and it is good. Congratulations, Alex DeMars. You've made your first extra point. You know, that shows a lot for him. He attempts a field goal, watches it get run back for a touchdown. The next kick he attempts, puts it right through the uprights. Very impressive for that kid. 19-15. Octorero with the lead. Avangrove now is going to need to get a touchdown to take the lead back, or there's enough time to get two field goals. You know, Mike, in almost every game I've done with you this year, by this point in the game, we've had a great idea of who is going to win. We can't say that tonight. Still don't have an idea of player of the game. I mean, maybe uh, Trent Pauling. That's who I'm leaning toward because of his dominant play tonight. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'd go dominant, but he's had some uh, big plays. He scored two TDs. Because the the biggest uh, yard gaining plays have been on trick plays, but yeah, I. I would lean towards him with his uh, two touchdowns. Six forty-two to go. Nineteen fifteen. The Braves with the lead. And that's the best kickoff we've seen tonight. Avangrove though with a good return, still going. The Ford Progress is. Still not stopped as the pile finally pushes him forward to the 47. Just did not want to go down. Actually, they spot him at the 46. That was Tyler Boyd on the return. We saw Boyd on the his last return had trouble getting the ball because of being slick. And then they had the block in the back. Avangrove with great field position. Jones got his biggest play of the night with a huge touchdown run. Scotty Burridge has to step it up on this one and try and put in a stop. He's one of their strongest defenders on the team. And off to Jones again. I, I know they've not had the most success passing, but I... I'd like to see them try a play action pass here on second down. They picked up three at second and seven. So if it doesn't work out in their favor, they can they can still have third down to worry about picking up the first down. And but it would be so unexpected if they succeeded. It would be unexpected by Dr. Error. Instead it's a run to Jones. As he really just Gets whatever he can is they just force him to the sideline. They didn't even need to tackle him. They have they had a wide receiver uh, out there on that you know closest to us near the sideline. Number nine, Brett Yurkovich. He's six foot two. The defensive back that's lined up against him is five foot ten. Maybe try and use that height advantage. It's third and two. Play action. Pass is complete. There you go. It's what we're talking about. It's going to be a first down for the Red Devils. We, if you're expecting Jones to get the ball every time. That's why I made my comment a few minutes ago about your comment on the pass. It worked out well, it was well executed. First down, keep the drive going. 5.41 to go. The clock is the friend right now of Octorera as it's a carry by Borky. Right now it's Octorera's friend, but if Avangrove can get a touchdown, Octorera might want to leave a little bit of time on the clock. And this is the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Both teams would be a big win for them. Octorero trying to get their second win of the season. Avangrove trying to get back to 500. Man in motion. 
Jones with the carry. He's got room to run. He's got the first down. He's still going. And he's going to go for the touchdown. What a run by Jones. 34-yard touchdown run. Nate Jones. And we were talking about player of the game. Right now, I think it's just switched back to being Nate Jones. Well, I'm kind of torn between Jones and Borky. I got to go with Jones, the two huge touchdown runs, but there's still plenty of time. If Otterrera can make this comeback, we got to see this extra point real quick. High snap. Oh, they're going for two. Borky with the run and he dives in. in. What a play call. 23 to 19. They didn't want to go for the extra point to allow a field goal to tie it. Harry O'Neill saw something there. Saw they had room to the outside. You were talking about, you know, Borky for possible player of the game. Great effort to get to the outside, diving in. But Coach Jed King has to be talking to his guys when I'm saying, hey, we were already down once in this game. We came back. We got plenty of time. 451. They just need a touchdown. And it's a four-point game. Octorero made it a four-point game on their last score. And now Avon Grove has a four-point game over Octorero. 451. They have Trent Pauling, who's had a nice night. They have Burge they can still go to. Nicholas Robb has had several big catches. They've not, they've shown they're not afraid to do trick plays tonight. Really want to see what happens on this kickoff. Is it a squib kick? Can they get a little bit more leg on it? Maybe an onside kick again. Chris Haynes, the kicker. This game's had everything. That's the best kick of the night. That's Cy Hall. He's thrown down at the 24. They stop him at the 24. They throw him back to the 22. And they actually move him. Now I'm just confused by that. Spot. I am too. I don't get why there wouldn't be forward progress. Well, the ref on the far side of the field was standing at the 24. The ref on the near side of the field was standing at the 22. So they said split the difference and they put it at the 23. Either way, they got to go 77 yards to take this lead back. Pauling takes it himself. Not too much room to run. As there's an injured player, Cy Hall's down, or he's limping. He's staying in the game, but he's noticeably injured. Now they're bringing him out of the game. Smart move. Yeah, he's in some uh, uh, major discomfort. As important a player as he is, not going to do anything limping. Handoff goes to Fahey. He made the first man miss, but he had to cut it back right into the Red Devil defense. This is a big third down for the Braves. There is 3.50 to go, but if this goes to a fourth down, do they go for it? Oh, we got to wait for this third and six first. This is the 3C TV Live Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. Mikey Dunn joined by Mike Dunn. Pass is complete to Brandon Garver. Looks like they're spotting it at the 35. Which would be enough for the first down. And it is. They've shown the night that when they know they need to get to a specific you know, amount of yards, their wide receiver is going to that point, turning back around and catching it. Remember uh, in the 
great football movie, Any Given Sunday, when the quarterback Willie Beeman was struggling, didn't know what to do. The head coach, who was played by Al Pacino, said, just simple football like when you were a kid. Run to the Buick, turn around, I'll throw it to you. Well, that's what they're doing here. They're running the first time marker, they're turning around, they're throwing it to him, they're catching it. Pauling takes it himself. Again, want, five. want to point out the block there by Fahey because Pauling had the ball. He was running all the way, and there was a defensive player right there. That play was about to be done. What Fahey did was just throw his body in front of that defensive player, held him off for a half a second. That allowed Pauling to pick up five. And in the course of that, Pauling ran into his own man. But gain of five would Pick up four yards of carry, you're golden. 2.30 to go. This could very well be the last drive of the game. Fahey gets the carry. It's gonna bring up another third down. I know, we're saying, I know we're saying they have plenty of time, but they need a little bit of urgency. Gain of three on the play, third and two. As the, they're, they're huddling up, it's 2.11 to go. Why are they not hustling? They're huddling, they're taking their time. You got Pauling over at the sideline getting the play call. We're under two minutes now. Way too much time between plays. Yes, they've gotten a couple big gains tonight on trick plays, but this drive has been short yardage. Third and two. Play action pass. He's going to take it himself. He's got the first down. He's still going. He's past midfield. And calling for the timeout. Is Burridge. Or they're not calling the timeout. He was seeing a timeout there. Maybe he was doing a hand signal of, hey, let's huddle. But it sure looks like he was calling for a timeout. But the refs weren't looking at him. Minute 35 to go. Is they're still letting this clock run. they got to have more urgency. First and 10. Minute 25 to go. Clock still going. Falling drops back the pass. Nobody's open. He just throws it up, and it's incomplete. They threw it to the big man, Nicholas Robb. He's six foot four, but he was hit by two receivers. That ball was, or two defensive players. That ball was floated in there. And we're saying about the sen no sense of urgency. There's only a minute 16 left. And if I'm not mistaken, they haven't called the timeout this half. They have all three left. Nope, they called the timeout after the turnover, the very first play after the fumble they forced, which I questioned at that time, but they, they have timeouts, but... I... Second and 10, great coverage there by the Red Devils. The Braves need a touchdown. The Avro fans make up some noise. That pass is thrown to Burridge, incomplete. It was thrown too high. Third and 10, obvious four down territory. Did they try and get the first down on this play or to pick up as much as they can? Even if that pass was complete, that was not gonna go for any yards. It might be better because it stopped the clock. You know, this wouldn't be a bad spot for uh, Avangrove to go on timeout, just make sure they have the right personnel on the field, although they're still accounting for if they get have to try and score. Twenty-three nineteen. Avangrove with the lead. They trailed twelve nothing at halftime. Toss play, it's that reverse. No, they fake the reverse pass. Burridge. Not going to have enough for the first down, but love that play call. Gain as, of eight. No. As they did that play, doing the pass play, doing the actual reverse in the pass with great success. 58.9 seconds to go. Fourth down. Mike, what's the play call here? Annexation of Puerto Rico. And I thought you didn't even like the movie Little Giants as they're adding time back on the clock. As the Heaven Crow fans are not happy. Again, it's one set of bleachers here, so the uh, both fans are right next to each other. That was an Heaven Grove timeout. 
fourth and two. The game comes down to this play. Do they let Pauling take it himself? You know what play I call here? Uh, well, if they really want to get gutsy, they can call a play action pass. But I, I say you call a uh, shotgun formation, you go in the option, you let put Burridge and Pauling out there, and you let your playmakers make the big play. Run the option to the strong side. Clock stops for a first down. If it's just a simple run up the middle, I, I would be a little disappointed if I was a Brave fan with that. So if they get the first down, clock stops for when they reset the chains. They can hurry up there. They need to show some urgency, but they got to pick up this first down. So it's actually going to be Fahey in the backfield with Pauling. As Coach O'Neill is having some discussions with the officials. As are we still maybe having a clock issue? I don't know, but the officials come to the sideline. Officials timeout. Now it's an As the refs are still trying to figure out what's going on here, they're, they're saying uh, Avangrove timeout, but uh, Coach O'Neill was questioning something. As the ref, the, the umpire finally, the head ref, the white hat, finally officially is the one who signals. And very definitively yes, so. Yes, we saw two other refs showing that it was a timeout, but uh, I'm curious to see what they're discussing right now. Well, we want to take this opportunity to discuss our great sponsors for tonight's game. It's the D'Ambrosio Auto Group, Miller's Insurance, Chester County Transmission, Barnabas of Westchester, Beaver Creek Tabard, College101.us, and the Chester County Fall Flying Festival. And if you want to advertise on the Chessmont Game of the Week, you can give us a call at 610-306-9492. Here it is, fourth and two. Octorera trying to get it. It's going to be a run up the middle by Pauling. The ref on the far side of the field has looking like he's going to spot it that it's going to be a first down. It's going to depend what spot they go with. I said I wasn't going to be happy if I'm an Octorera fan if they ran it straight up the middle. Um... Calling for a measurement. That was the safe play call there. Just the simple quarterback draw. He went right for it. It's going to come down to the spot. Going back to any given Sunday, they give the speech of football as a game of inches. Well, that's what this spot's, uh, this measurement's going to be. I'm going to say it now before the measurement. I, I, I didn't like the play call. I... I like, I like options for my players. If it was for inches, I'd be fine with the quarterback sneak. They didn't get it. And it's going to be Avon Grove football. So they're just a couple of kneel downs away from going back to 500. Octorera has to be disappointed. They were up 12 0 at halftime, and the game turned on a blocked field goal returned for a touchdown because, as you know, you got to be sound in the kicking game. And they weren't. I mean, clearly they, they'd have had some issues in the kicking game. They, they brought in a, a soccer player to uh, do the kicks. They hurt themselves with the illegal procedure before that field goal that was blocked. They allowed pressure to come through. It was a little bit of a low kick, but still they allowed a man to break through the offensive line. Dis you can see the disappointment in the Octavera players. As it looked like in the first half, they had this game. It's going to be a timeout by Octorera. As a... Uh, as the Avangrove uh, fans are yelling at the timekeeper saying, hey, why didn't more clock run there? 
As the refs are uh, wondering why the clock wasn't running. As they're signaling that the clock needs to be running as they finally have it going. The Havinger fans were not happy there. As we will have a post-game interview with Sierra Horsey with the winning coach. And that coach right now looks like it's going to be Harry O'Neill. Coach Harry O'Neill. Fifty-six point four seconds to go. Avon Grove's in victory formation. As eight tenths of a second go off the clock there. Timeout, Octorera. They're That's hanging fair. on to the hope for a miracle. It's their last timeout of the game. We talked about you know, Avon Grove, the history that they've had where they've not had a lot of success since 2009, but how Harry O'Neill after going 0-10 his first season went 5-6 and six last year. These are the types of wins, these gutty wins that help you build your program. They started off 2-0, and went three weeks without scoring an offensive touchdown. They went the first half without scoring an offensive touchdown. Third quarter, they get the block field goal, but then they just kept finding ways their star player uh, Nate Jones, two big touchdown runs. They're back to 500. That, that, that's huge. Not only did you come back from three weeks of struggling, you came back in this game. For Octorera, they saw some things that worked tonight, but just costly mistakes. That's interesting. That was a victory formation, but a play forward. You know what? I think they just wanted to take an extra couple seconds off the clock. Uh, as they spot the ball, I think they're gonna, they might have to run a play on fourth down. But if they wanted to, they can just snap it, maybe let the quarterback back up a couple yards and then take a knee. This is fourth down, Mike. There's 22 seconds left. I think they're going to have to snap the ball. Just take an extra second or two off the clock. Ten. Oh, you know what? That's uh, they did. Uh, they will have to run a play. There's 10 seconds left. Do they come out and punt? Do they snap it and try and run 10 seconds off the clock and then throw it up in the air? Mike, please explain something to me. How can you call a delay of game in a stadium that doesn't have a 25-second well, clock or a 30-second well, clock? Well, the officials have to have a running clock going. But is that fair to the players? Well, we've discussed that in pre previous weeks. I mean, they, they know that they don't have a clock, so they have to have that internal clock. The players have to have uh, an idea. He's saying to add two seconds back. I've never had so many clock issues in the game. So, Avangrove getting ready to run possibly the last play of the game. So there's 12 seconds on the clock. It's fourth and 16. Octorera has a chance here. Well, I think if, if, if uh, they're smart, yep, they're gonna, Avangrove's gonna run it into the end zone, back of the end zone for a safety. It really should have stopped it at six seconds on the clock. There's 5.4 seconds to go, so it's 23 to 21. Now, uh, uh, Avangrove is going to have to kick it to Octorera, but I mean, not a surprising play it was being discussed in the press box of what they're going to do, but uh, he could have taken more time there. I know there was a player chasing him and he didn't want to, to go down, but he could have maybe run he, around in the end zone I a little bit. I think he could have ended the game with that play. I, I don't know if he would have gotten all the way down, but could have gotten it to maybe a second or so. Um, could have done the Deshaun Jackson where he was running along the goal line, but he could have done that in the back of the end zone. That was a very smart play because, as you pointed out, they have to kick 
the ball off. And that's going to be a much longer field for Oxford to come and, back to. And what makes it interesting, though, is uh, and I know they wouldn't have intentionally done the safety if the score was different, but just looking at the kicking mistakes tonight for uh, Octorera to have it be a two-point game. Here we go. Game. You got to be sound. Kicking. Now, if the ball is in the air, uh, Octorera would be wise to call a fair catch. So that way they can have one offensive play. Now, they should do a squib kick to avoid that happening. But the ball has to be kicked in bounds. Otherwise, we'd have one on time down. We we're expecting a competitive game tonight. It has been competitive. It's also been very strange. Enjoyable, but strange. It is a squib kick. And instead of just going down on the ground, they are doing the return. So there's zero seconds on the clock, but they're just going backwards. As I don't know why they didn't just uh, sit on the ball. Yeah, they could have had a play still, as there's no room. Now there's room. There's room. That there's a flag on the play. Forward pass. As it was an illegal forward pass. And that's going to do it. As the the press box is getting fired up, thinking they had the room, but there was a flag on the play for the legal forward pass. It wasn't going to matter anyway. As the, uh, an interesting thing here is that uh, Avon Grove fans are getting into an argument with the people of the press box uh, here at Octorero. So this game has had everything, but when it, ultimately has is a 23 to 21 final as Avangrove has defeated Octorera and possibly the strangest game I've ever broadcast. That's two of us. Uh, blocked, blocked field goals, uh, scoreboard issues, arguments between fans and members of the press box. This game has had it all. And what we're going to have for you is a post-game interview with the winning coach. Again, that's Coach Harry O'Neill. As his Avangrove Red Devils go to 3-3, three and three, pulling off the second half comeback. Mike, let's recap the scoring real quick. Well, it started off with a TD pass to Rob for Octorera. There was no PAT on the play. It was 6 nothing Octorera. Then there was a run by Pauling for Octorera. They went for two on the PAT but didn't get it, so we have a 12 nothing score. No points were scored by either team in the second quarter. In the third, Avon Grove came to life. There was a block kick, and Glazer took the block in for a touchdown. It was a positive PAT, and it was a 12-7 score. Octorara is still leading. In the fourth quarter, there was a touchdown run by Jones. They went for two points, got it. It was a 15-12 score for Avon Grove. There was a touchdown run by Pauling for Octorera. They got the PAT. It was 19-15. Touchdown run by Jones for Avon Grove. PAT was good. 23-19 Avon Grove. And the final score of the game was a safety where it was 23-21 for the final score where Borky ran it into the end zone behind him to try and kill time, and that's how we ended up tonight. And then the final play of the game was the kickoff, which led to uh, several pitches and throws. Um, Including the illegal forward pass. For, for Coach Jed King, um, the offense had some big plays, but they weren't able to get touchdowns when they needed to. They got field goal attempts instead uh, for... The defense, they really held Jones in check except for two plays for Avangrove. Uh, first half, nothing went right. They were giving up big plays. No they, scoring. They Really, the only success they had was, you know, after they were hurting themselves. But then in the second half, it all started with the block field goal return for the touchdown. Then they got Jones going on a couple of big runs. The defense started forcing turnovers. I think some of that was, you know, Octorera just getting, you know, nervous a little bit. But they get the win. They go to 3-3. Three and three. Uh, Coach O'Neill's got to be very happy. Again, we're going to have Sierra Horsey with the post-game interview. It's a big, uh, big win. 
Um, they go to three and three. They go to one and two in the conference. They they did what they needed to do to win. We, we you know, said it during the game. I always say it. A win is a win. And they did what they needed to tonight. Uh, again, final score of 23 to 21. Sierra Horsey getting ready to interview head coach Harry O'Neill. Take it away, Sierra. We have with us Coach Harry O'Neill of the Avon Grove Red Devils. Coach, it seemed like a, a pretty, I don't know what to call it, earlier the first half. It was 12 to 0 for a while. And then you guys came back the second half and you beat Octorera. That's awesome. So what significance does tonight's win hold for your team going forward? Well, we were three. Uh, we lost our last three games coming into this week. So to get out of here with a W against a very well-prepared team tonight that played really hard with knocked their error, um, that's a big W for us because now we, you know, we got four games left in the season. This puts us at three and three, and going forward, we gotta we gotta play like we did in the second half. Nate Jones seemed to be the most impactful player of tonight's game. Talk about his performance. I told him at halftime that the ball's got to go through him or we weren't going anywhere. And I challenged him because he's a pretty quiet kid for the most part. I challenged him to take over the locker room, and he took over the locker room. And in the second half, he took over the field, too. I'm very proud of him. Wow. Well, it was awesome. It was an awesome game today. And you guys, you, just, you did great the second half. Um, congratulations. No problem. Thank you. This is Sierra Horsey with ChestmontFootball.com as produced by 3CTVLive.com. Remember to like us and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at 3CTVLive. We'll take you there. And just to finish it up here at Octorera High School, again, final score. Just to finish up at Octorera High School, final score, Avon Grove 23, Octorera 21. Uh, this is definitely a game you're going to want to check out the archive of a lot of uh, interesting plays. You got to see a talented running back uh, really put on a show uh, in that fourth quarter. Uh, so for Mike Dunn, I am Mikey Dunn. Thanks for tuning in to the Chessmont Game of the Week on ChessmontFootball.com. And remember, 3CTV Live, we'll take you there. Good night. Good night, folks.